complete order. Um, it's unusual to have the CAO call a meeting to order. Uh, there is a reason, however. Uh, before we get into our regular uh, uh, scheduled council meeting, we have a bus business to attend to. And uh, the business is the um, selection of our warden and, if required, uh, potentially a deputy warden. So uh, I am chair because uh, until we make that decision, the CAO acts as chair. Um, I'll just go over some, some of the process today so that we're all understanding uh, how this will, will work. We don't do this every day. Um, uh, first of all, uh, we'll, we're going to move on to first. We always, obviously, we're gonna, the, the warden position is the position that is vacated, so we will begin with that. And, um, and uh, the warden is different than the mayor in the sense that the warden is selected by uh, his or her peers. So the way it will work is I will call for nominations. And uh, a candidate may be nominated by any other councillor, uh, including a councillor who is a nominator or seconder of a previously nominated candidate. So obviously, uh, in this case, we're, it'll be warden. So it'll just, it'll, you can, anybody can nominate a, another person. Uh, each nominee will be asked if he or she consents to being nominated. So they have to agree to be uh, on the, the ticket, uh, for lack of a better term. Uh, if the nominee declines, the nominee's name shall not be included in the list of candidates. I will call for additional nominations until calling three successive times without one. The nominations will close. If there is only one candidate, I will call for a motion to elect the warden. If there's more than one candidate, each councillor shall vote in private by writing the candidate's name on a ballot, and that is the selected candidate, the person you wish to have as warden, and placing it in, uh, in a box that we have. And a uh, candidate may vote for himself or herself, and the ballots will be counted in a manner that preserves the confidentiality of each councillor's ballot. So the only persons that will know um, the who vote, not who voted for whom, but the amount of votes that the candidate has received will be myself and our municipal clerk, Ailey, uh, after, the, after which we destroy uh, the, uh, the evidence. Uh, <laughs> it's not e-voting, by the way. So, um, so if the majority has voted for any one candidate, we will announce the name of the warden. Um, and so obviously, if there's more than one candidate, there's a possibility that the majority of, pe of persons would not have selected that candidate. If that is the case, then one person gets dropped off and then we have another election with the remaining candidates until the majority of the council selects their warden. Uh, now, obviously, this system will be the same if, uh, if the deputy warden position is vacated as a consequence of this election. So we'll have to do the same thing again for the deputy warden. Same process. And what we'll do is, if regardless of whether we have uh, one or two uh, uh, positions to fill. We'll wait until those positions are filled and we'll do the oaths uh, at the end and I will go back to my chair. Um, so if, are there any questions or clarification questions at all? Okay. So I will open the nominations for Warden. I'd like to nominate uh, Danny Muse for Warden. I have a nomination for Danny Muse for Warden. Second. It is seconded by, um, just, yes, okay, thank you. Uh, seconded by, by uh, Councillor uh, Richard. Uh, do you accept the nomination? I accept. We have one nomination, an accepted nomination for the Warden for the Municipality of Argyle, Danny Muse. Do we have, do we have any other nominations? Do we have any other nominations? Last call. Do we have any other nominations? I call the nominations period closed, and by selection as and by the by the fact that you are the sole and and obviously wanted warden for the municipality of Argyle, I congratulate you. You are in fact the warden for the municipality of Argyle. So now, that, so now that vacates 
So we have now vacated the, the position deputy, of deputy warden. deputy warden. So you can you can stay where you are, uh, warden, okay. and uh, we'll we'll open up a second nomination uh, period, um, and we will open that nomination period now. I'd like to nominate Guy Surrett. Guy Surrett is nominated. Is there a seconder? I'll second that motion. The motion is seconded. Councillor Surrett, do you accept the nomination? With pleasure. With pleasure. That. That means yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have a with pleasure yes. Uh, do we have another nomination for deputy warden? Do we have another nomination for deputy warden? Last call. Any nomination for deputy warden? The nominations are closed. So clearly the confidence is in our new Deputy Warden. Congratulations, <laughs> Deputy Warden Giesewald. And so, uh, so uh, I think uh, I missed a step. We have to do this by motion. So if we could pass uh, both motions uh, for Warden and Deputy Warden uh, in separate motions, we would like to do that now. So I realize he's nominated and seconded, but we actually need a motion to accept. I make a motion to accept. Former Councillor Mews is warden. Okay, seconded by. Okay, no discussion on the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Motion. We should put former deputy warden. <laughs> motion. <laughs> motion carried. Uh, and so I will seek another motion for deputy warden. To can I make a motion? Because you're chair. Yes, you can. I will. Yeah. Move, I will move that uh, Councillor Gisred. That have been appointed to a deputy board. Okay, we have a mover, we have a seconder. I'll second that motion. Moved and seconded. Uh, question of the motion, all those, all those in favor sing by, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carried. Okay, so those are the official uh, motions. And now we will ask the uh, Honorable Tim Landry to um, uh, take the swearing of the oaths of the warden and deputy warden. And that will end the uh, special meeting and then we will move on to the the official meeting with with the warden uh, uh, chairing that meeting and I just before I leave and allow and and get out of the way and allow this to proceed I'd just like to give a shout out to um, uh, Deputy Mayor and Deputy Warden uh, Cunningham and Mooney uh, from the town and the municipality of Yarmouth who were kind enough to attend uh, and show their support of, of this process so that when it did not go unnoticed. So thank you, thank you to both of you. And I and I thank them both as well, and, and everybody and, else. And Ward, I talked to our member of parliament at uh, five o'clock. We said congratulations to the staff and we are your appointments. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> how, how did he know? How did he know? <laughs> Just leave that for me. Uh, he. <laughs> 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 okay. Inside of the radio. Inside of the radio. I, Danny Mews, swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, and that I am duly qualified as required by law for the office of Warden of the Municipality of Argyle, and that I will truly, faithfully, and impartially execute the duties of the office to which I have been elected to the best of my knowledge and ability, and that I have not received and will not receive any payment or reward or promise thereof for the exercise of any partiality or other undue execution of the duties of my office. Thank you, Thank you very much. I, Guy Surrett, swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to the law, and that I am duly qualified as required by law for the office of Deputy Warden of the Municipality of Argyle and that I will truly, faithfully, and impartially execute the duties of office to which I have been elected to the best of my knowledge 
and nobility, and that I have not received and will not receive any payment or reward or promise thereof for the exercise of any particular par partiality or other undue execution of the duties of my office. As always. And I just want to thank the rest of the council for their confidence in having me as the warden. And I'd like to say the same thing to everybody. Thank you very much for your confidence. I know I talk a lot, but uh, I might be a little quieter behind you. But thank you. <laughs> Say, Can we say here, here? Can we say here? Quiet down now. Calm down now. Uh, calm down. Can I have your old chair when Kathy comes back? You want that chair. You don't go down. No. I switched mine <laughs> from that one. Yeah. This this one here is, is higher and it stays. Yeah, right. I think before we start the meeting, too, we should give our former that ward uh, don't do that. A thank you <laughs> and a good round of applause for the I think so too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so, Mr. Warden, we'll just have to, yeah, call uh, this meeting, meeting closed and then call the regular meeting. So you, you're, you, okay. as, because you're sworn in, it's your meeting now, sir. Okay, so now I just, I just declare the meeting or do we need a, uh, we, we call to adjourn the okay, special okay. meeting. We, we yeah. would like an adjourn, someone to move the adjournment of our special meeting. It was moved. So the meeting is adjourned. <laughs> thank, thank you, John. Thank you anyway. Thank you to come for coming. So, at this point, we will call the regular council meeting to order. We have an you have an agenda in front of you. Are there any additions or deletions of the agenda? I have one add-on, if I could. Yes. It's in district community grants. Would have one for district four. Okay, so so it's another grant. Under I, maybe? Councilor Sirick, right there, you've already got one. Have I got one? Oh, thank you. District Community You're Grant, right. Twin Village Social Club. Thank you very and much. which one did, and the other one will be? This is the Events and Planning Committee. Okay. Yeah, of the Islands and District, yeah. If no other additions, uh, motion to approve the agenda. Um, no. no, you have an addition? I don't know if it's an addition or not. It's maybe just a clarification to do with the Mariner Center Expansion Committee. It's a position, so I assume the GEE automatically takes that position. I see, because uh, with the group of nine. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah right. right. So is should, that something that we should check into to make sure. I think we should. Um, I think we should do it by motion. If council is is prepared to make that decision okay. tonight, it's just a, a simple motion. Exactly. To, okay. To, well, add it to the agenda. Yeah. Yes. So we'll add that in our decision. Twelve. That's what I was saying. Twelve. Okay. Yep. I don't have it. On there the oh, right there for decision. Sorry. Okay. With that, can we have a motion to approve the agenda as uh, amended? Move. Move. Second. Move and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contraminded. Carried. We have a presentation. And the presentation is uh, public inquiry on the risks of offshore drilling. And I have the name of the John Davis is what I have. <laughs> no, I, I didn't figure you were. But that's what's on the agenda. He was a contact. So you'll have to introduce yourself. Yes, I will. Thank you very much. 
missed award and we missed uh, conflict of interest decoration. All conflict of interest. Before we begin, that's right. Are there any conflicts of interest to declare? Okay. Hearing none, we'll continue. Okay. Thank you, Your Worship and Councillors, for giving us time on your agenda, and congratulations to the newly elected uh, Warden and Deputy Warden. My name is Marilyn Ketty, and I'm here on behalf of the Campaign to Protect Offshore Nova Scotia. It's a voluntary citizens group associated with the Council of Canadians and the Offshore Alliance, which is a group of 20 or so environmental fisheries and community-based groups. Our purpose is to protect our ocean and shorelines from the risks associated with offshore drilling. I'm here tonight with Nathan Blades from the Clean Ocean Action Committee. He would more appropriately be associated with John Davis, I think. And he'll talk more about COAC. Our purpose tonight, as has been mentioned, is that we're meeting with councils to ask them to pass mo a motion in support of our call for a public inquiry. So with that, I'll turn over to, to Nathan. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Is that gonna be okay audio-wise? Okay. So hi everybody, thanks for having me here tonight, us here tonight. Congratulations to new warden and Duke, new yeah. deputy warden. So uh, a little bit of background. So I'm Nathan Blades. I'm uh, currently general manager of Sable Fish Packers 1988 Limited on Cape Sable Island, which is a seafood processing company that was started by my grandfather, Basil Blades, in the 1940s. Uh, been in continuous operation ever since, up until this point. Um, <clears throat> I am also former president of the Nova Scotia Fish Packers Association, which is a quite an important industry group representing the land-based seafood companies, a lot of them in Nova Scotia. We've successfully transitioned that group into what is now known as the Nova Scotia Seafood Alliance uh, with right around maybe a little bit over 100 seafood industry members at present. Um, I'm also a uh, former president of the Fishery Safety Association of Nova Scotia, which we started in 2009 to try to address uh, a terrible safety problem in the seafood industry and, uh, and escalating workers' compensation rates. And finally, I'm a director on Clean Ocean Action Committee. Um, so Clean Ocean Action Committee was started in late 2015. It was done uh, basically out of concern over, over the Offshore Petroleum Board's up for bid process, which had several pieces of the offshore of Nova Scotia in the up for bids process which were extremely close to very important fishing areas. Um, let me see if I can move this around here. I'll go to this slide first. So um, I'll give you a little rundown. I'm going to tell you something that you already know. I'm sure of it. Uh, in 2016, the seafood industry was valued, with an exported value estimated conservatively at about $1.8 billion annually. The seafood industry is responsible for 25,000 direct jobs in this province. And we've been here for several hundred years. It is a renewable resource, and Nova Scotia seafood is exported the world over. And I know everybody here in this room knows it. Every coastal community, mine, yours, depends on the seafood industry for its survival in Nova Scotia. And we have to think about what are the consequences should there be a, a large-scale oil and gas disaster in the Nova Scotia offshore, what would that do to the seafood industry that we all depend on for our economies and our livelihoods? So, what's going on right now? Current regulatory regime for offshore oil and gas is not sufficient to protect the marine environment or the seafood industry from a disaster. And that was why we were formed, COAC, in 19, and, yeah, 19, 2015. And our, our mission is to provide a unified voice to advocate for the seafood industry to the oil and gas regulator, CNSOPB, and federal and provincial governments. Um, we are made up entirely of volunteers. Uh, as I had to inform a Canadian senator a couple of weeks ago in Halifax, we're not funded by 
by out-of-country environmental activist groups. And um, basically, what we did, what we started out doing in 2015, we've been at it for almost four years now, is we have repeatedly asked the Offshore Petroleum Board, the federal government, the provincial government, to enact stronger regulatory measures to better protect the marine environment and thus our seafood industry from an oil and gas disaster should it happen. Um, the asks are not on the PowerPoint presentation, but things that we asked for were not unreasonable. So first of all, we asked that a capping stack be located in Nova Scotia or at least on the eastern seaboard, um, which is a very large piece of equipment that is used to try to get control of an out-of-control wellhead. So uh, a piece of machinery that was used in the <coughs> Deepwater Horizon disaster in 2010, 2011. Um, we were refused. They said, oh, well, a capping stack is very expensive. It could cost a billion dollars. You're the most profitable companies on the face of the planet. Uh, we asked for a commitment from the government and from the oil and gas regulator to not use chemical dispersants on a prospective oil and gas disaster because we feel strongly that there are severely toxic effects on marine species in the marine environment from dispersant-laced oil. We were denied. We, were, we asked for a commitment from the regulator and from the oil and gas industry to further develop their methods for containing and cleaning up an oil spill. Currently, their only tools for dealing with an oil spill in, in the ocean are booms and slick liquors, which have been around for decades and decades. And those pieces of equipment are rendered ineffective in waves greater than one meter and wind states of greater than one knot. This is the North Atlantic. It's not going to work. Um, we were denied. And um, we also asked for certain areas of the ocean that we believe are most vital to the seafood industry, to marine species, to be declared off limits to oil and gas exploration. We were denied. And we also asked for an emergency insurance fund of, of a type to be established and be contributed to by the oil and gas industry to, uh, to put together a contingency fund to compensate the oil, uh, seafood industry stakeholders should we be wiped out by an oil and gas disaster. And all of our asks have been denied. So one of the lease sites that we talked about was here. Sites three and four, this was from 2010 up for biz process, uh, 2015 I mean. So sites three and sites four, very contingent to Brown's Bank, the edge of George's Bank, Backwood Bank, La Haye Bank, and Hill Bank, like right in the middle of all of our big, all of our big uh, fishing banks. This picture over here is a picture of the uh, of tide, tidal currents, currents and tidal flow in into and out of the Bay of Fundy. So what we're basically saying is, should there be an oil and gas, gas disaster right here, that oil is going to be carried by the tides up into the Bay of Fundy, distributed around, and it's spit back out in the Gulf of Maine. And uh, I think it would be extremely devastating. And here's part of the reason why. If you look over on here, OK, these are all of our lobster fishing areas. Here's uh, LFA 40, nursery zone. Um, this is a quick DF little pick of, of lobster population densities off Nova Scotia. But this here, lobster larva, 15 day old lobster larva is blue, 30 day old lobster larva is red. That's at the surface, and that's at a 10 meter depth. If you have an oil spill on the surface of the ocean and then you disperse it, you're going to make Dispersant laced oil contaminate all of your all of your lobster larvae. Not even not even talking about your your fully developed lobsters that might be on the ground. What is a nursery nursery LFA, LFA LFA forty? What does nursery? What does that mean? LFA forty is a is a lobster fishing area in the in the offshore of Nova Scotia where you're not allowed to go fishing for lobster. Oh, oh okay. so it's like a nursery zone. It's an off limit zone. It's supposed to be exactly. protected. Yeah, I get the eggs are right there. Yeah. Yeah. It's very so, uh, Thank you. Here also, ground fish landings. 
if we're off Nova Scotia, this is the density of brown fish landings. So, you know, here's areas three and four from the up for bids process in 2015, and that's what that's what spurred us to get going at the time of 2015. Um, oh yeah, that, that one's long line, that one's bottom trawl. So it's it's right in the heart of not only the lobster fishing but our ground fish fishing important areas that run this two billion dollar export industry every year. Um, now I'll go back. So, as I said, everything that we've asked for from the CNSOPB has been denied. They've said that we don't think it's reasonable or, or uh, you know, uh, very commonly they said, well, the oil and gas industry is extremely safe and the chances of something happening are, are slim to none, infinitesimal, nothing to worry about. We operate very safely and we use the best technology and the best equipment available in the market. Okay, and usually I go back at them and say, in 2010, the Deepwater Horizon oil rig exploded and fell into the sea. And that was the most modern, newest oil drilling platform on Earth at the time. The best of the best. Not supposed to happen. It happened. So, in 2016, these are just recent incidents in our waters. 2016, using the Stena Ice Max, they dropped two kilometers of drill pipe in their lower marine riser package from the drill ship to the bottom, and it landed meters away from the wellhead that they were drilling to experimental drilling for oil. Um, luckily, there was no disaster. Uh, Offshore Petroleum Board investigated, and uh, Shell was allowed to leave two kilometers of drill pipe in the lower marine riser package on the ocean floor. That has never happened in the history of this planet. That's the first time in history that's ever happened. And when we're talking about the best of the best and the best technology and the safest equipment, that's never happened. The unexpected happens. We have, in 2018, BP spilled 136,000 reported liters of synthetic drilling muds onto the ocean floor. Offshore Petroleum Board investigated and their conclusion was that BP will install a pressure gauge on their drilling mud system on their advanced semi-submersible oil rig, a pressure gauge. Now, in November of 2018, this is a very glaring failure because I think this is a real good example of how things go wrong in the harsh conditions of the North Atlantic. Husky energy off of Newfoundland, far from shore. After the, one of the biggest storms of the century in the North Atlantic, in wave states greater than eight meters, Husky Energy made the decision to try to reconnect their oil drilling platform to their tanker that they were pumping into. They broke the coupling because their conditions were way too harsh, and they spilled a reported 250,000 liters of oil into the ocean, which has never been contained and never cleaned up, and it never was going to be. The regulatory package for the Offshore Petroleum Board in Newfoundland, their regulatory regime said, Husky did not have to ask permission from the Offshore Petroleum Board to restart operations. They chose profit over safety, and they spilled oil. So that is why we're going around asking for municipal units to try to support us. Because, yeah, we're the seafood industry, and it's one of the biggest industries in Nova Scotia, and we employ... 25,000 direct jobs, and our, our group of industry associates has been not able, on our own, to convince these regulators to better protect the ocean. We're not asking for everything to go away as COAC. We're asking for better regulation so that we are better prepared for a disaster, that a, a disaster is less likely to happen. And at every turn, we have been refused. We embarked on this mission to go around and get support from municipal units to ask for a public inquiry. And in response to that, the Offshore Petroleum Boards mounted their own public relations campaign to travel around Nova Scotia and advocate against us, which I, uh, blows my mind. Anyway, so I think that is the end of my part of the presentation. Uh, 
I trust everybody understands what I've said, and, and I'm hoping that you're all leaning towards supporting the call for a full public inquiry. Yes. What do you need from us exactly? Um, basically, we need we need a motion passed by your council to draft a letter to ask the federal government and provincial government for a full public inquiry into the dangers or the potential risks of offshore oil and gas development in Nova Scotia. Yeah. I'm not sure the media. You got more? No, go ahead. No, are you asking for all Nova Scotia for those two areas that you pointed out to us? Oh, those two areas were just the, just were up for bids in the 2015 up for bids package. Okay. So every year, what happened there is they had, they had all these areas, some of them were, some of them received bids, some of them didn't. Um, areas three and four eventually did not receive bids, so they were not sold. And um, what happened is the Offshore Petroleum Board tried to say to people like us that, well, you know, you got what you wanted because there's not going to be any licenses for this area three, area four. Okay, but under the current system for the up for bids process is basically what happens is the oil and gas company will come and say, we want to explore here. And the Offshore Petroleum Board says, okay, we'll draw a box there and we'll put that in to the up, and up for bids process down the road. So any of these areas that are not currently taken up by an offshore oil and gas lease could be renominated or, or redrawn and nominated again any year, any time. Any, any more questions? Yes? Do you, do you mind? If, uh, I'm not a member of council, but just. just uh, there's a line extending from just north of Grand Manet yep. going down to the darker line, the corner of the darker line. Is it fair to say that that's the Hague line extending Correct. all the way down to the uh, to, to the to the to the edge of uh, to the edge of the continental shelf? It uh, is. Yeah. It, it is. is. There okay. you go. Oh, okay. you know so the Hague line, line is the line that was demarked by the World Court back in 1984, demarking the division, a long disputed uh, contest between Canada and the United States, right. and established which sides of uh, the or, or which portions of that part of the ocean both countries would have jurisdiction. Oh, my, yeah. my, my question, and, and so we have a portion of Georgia's bank. And the Americans have another portion of Georgia's bank. That's right. That's that. Those were the. That was the principal bank that was contested. So the line was was drawn there, and it's been there since 1984, more or less. Yeah, okay. My question to you is that if it, it I guess the first question is, and I, I'm no, I really don't know the answer. Are there oil reserves on the Americans? Documented oil reserves on the American side of the Hague line as well. I do not know if there are confirmed resources there. Um, there's, as far as I know, there's a ban on production or exploration there okay. currently, <laughs> Cause, cause the reason, as of today. <laughs> the reason for my question is that, is that even though, let's say the moratorium that currently exists yep. were changed to an out and out ban, yep. but the Americans were to drill oil, yep. and of course, I, I agree with you that there's, there's nothing that you can do with regards to Mother Nature. Uh, yeah. There's something you can do, but avoiding 100% accidents, uh, well, it's, it's a dream world. It's a due uh, diligence it's exercise. A, uh, it's a due diligence. And in any event, I guess my question to you is that, is it fair to say that if there were drilling and accidents on the American side, that it could affect the Canadian side? Oh, no doubt. It, environmental. No doubt. I mean, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you look, it's, it's kind of a circular gyre, right? Right. right? right. right. In the tidal flow. So... You know, the, John Davis knows these statistics for the amount of, like, liters or gallons of water that's pulled into the Bay of Fundy and out every time the tide changes. I, there's millions of them. But, you know, if there's an oil spill in this area here, say on the U.S. side, right, at least part of that is going to be circular, drawing back up into the Bay of Fundy and, then, and then just kind of back and forth in through the Gulf of Maine. It's interesting that you mentioned about about what happens in the U.S. affects what happens in Canada. And vice versa. Um, in 2011-2012, the Georges Bank moratorium on oil and gas development was set to expire. And I was part of No Rigs 3 with Denny Morrow, you probably know him, uh, and we were campaigning for that moratorium to be extended, well, indefinitely. We wanted a permanent ban. Yeah. But um, at the time, 
before Deepwater Horizon happened, this we were lobbying and lobbying and writing letters and, and phone calls and, and trying to get meetings with these people. Federal government, provincial government, neither of them had any interest in committing to extending the moratorium. Uh, the best that we got from the Harper government at the time, federally, was don't worry about it. There's not, you know, there's not going to be anything, whatever. And um, Deepwater Horizon happened, and that all changed. And that is why the moratorium still exists on the Georges Bank. Uh, and that's due to come off, I believe, in 2022. It's a moratorium. Right. So we have to we have to try to mount another battle to try to get it extended beyond 2022, if that's what the industry wants. Moratorium only means not now, maybe later. That's right. That's right. Yep. So uh, I guess my, my last question is, do you know what, if anything, your uh, colleagues in your area, in your field, uh, and are there any committees or any organizations on the American side that are promoting uh, similar or lobbying their government similarly uh, in the U.S.? Daryl. Um, the, the, after the Deepwater Horizon disaster, the, uh, there was pressure from towns and cities all along the Atlantic coast, and there was a moratorium put on offshore drilling and seismic testing, and that's still in effect. And as we know, the situation in the U.S. is precarious around many things, and and that as as uh, as well. But uh, so there are but the there moment, are organizations in the U.S. Uh, there are the organizations U.S. in the U.S. The um, attorneys general along the eastern seaboard as well have all written uh, to the presidents threatening that they will sue if there's drilling off their shores because they know the risk that that poses to, as we're talking about, their environment and their economy. Yep. So there is, you know, there is action and far more action at a state level then certainly we have, because we have our province promoting and subsidizing the oil and gas industry. So. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Matt, Mr. Warren. I, I appreciate your giving me the opportunity. Okay. I have to ask as well, how much longer is... Well, I'm, hurry. My I was still. going to ask you the same question, how much time... Well, you you've gone over the time that's allotted already. Okay. Now, I'm going to pull the... Uh, Council to see if they want to continue to hear the rest. Uh, I certainly think this is so important for all the fishers out there, and, and that I, I have no problem. But it's up to the rest. This is just my opinion. I don't think we need to continue. Okay, very just good. Just for the sole fact that yeah. okay. uh, we've seen a similar presentation, and I think I'd like to be able to guess how council is going to feel about this. I think <laughs> I think Marilyn. I think she's only got maybe. Two or three minutes. Well, oh, I didn't realize. Sorry, no, sorry. I thought you meant question period. No, you... no, no, no. Oh, okay. See, oh question. She no. still has uh, uh, some, some. Oh, my apologies. So it's up to it's up to council. If we want to continue, that's that's the uh, feeling of the yeah. council. Continue. continue. I would uh, mind. Okay. It's very important for this. Same here. Okay. Area, so. yeah. I will go, go, go as ahead. quickly as I can. Okay. <laughs> The map I'm going to uh, show is just to look at it quickly. This is what the Deepwater Horizon disaster would look like around the shores of, of Nova Scotia. BP has the worst safety record in the world. Uh, they were given permission to come here. Uh, and Nathan has talked about the conditions in the North Atlantic. And another point is they, the bid areas in Nova Scotia are far closer to land than they were in, in the Gulf of Mexico. And a decade later, those communities are still struggling to, uh, to recover. There's also mounting scientific evidence, which I'm so sure most of you have been, been reading. It's the report they, that came out from um, uh, Environment uh, and Climate Change Canada around how quickly that we're warming at twice, at twice the rate. The Arctic is warming at northern uh, Canada at three times the rate. We've had a panel that says we have 11 years. We have, and we have international economists saying that subsidies to the fossil fuel industry needs to end 
they need to end now if we are going to be effectively addressing the climate crisis. Um, we sought expert opinion uh, as well when BP filed their application up here. And the person we consulted with was Dr. Robert Bea, who's a world-renowned expert in risk assessment. He's based in, in California. He was hired by the Australian government to look at BP's bid when they wanted to drill in the Great Australian Bight. And he uh, determined that their proposal, the safety standards in their proposal were, were below acceptable standards. So when the Australian government insisted that they meet those standards, they with BP withdrew their application and they came to Nova Scotia because uh, our regulations are such that, uh, that they could uh, get permits here. Uh, the other threat that we're up against in turn associated with offshore drilling is seismic testing. Seismic testing is what the oil companies use to uh, map the geology of the, of the ocean and to try and determine where the oil deposits are most likely to be. They're, they're very loud blasts <laughs> that happen uh, continuously over a period of, of up to many months and every, every uh, few seconds or so you get, they, they, they make these, shoot these big air guns. They affect um, lobster, they affect whales, they affect plankton, anything basically that lives in the ocean has, is impacted by seismic t testing. And what it does is it affects the, the uh, mammals in the sea with their ability to communicate, to avoid predators, uh, it decreases their immune system and catch rates, and uh, they have increased mortality. So when you hear that right whales are, are on the decrease and are endangered, it's a major, there are studies that show uh, that there's this seismic testing is having a major impact on, on the whale population. So, there may be some short-term benefits to, uh, uh, to oil and gas exploration in terms of, of royalties, which could make a government's budget look, look better come election time. The long-term effects by the communities that bear the lion's share of the risk, we think are simply not, uh, not worth the risk. So the scientific reports uh, uh, state that uh, uh, pursuing fossil fuel development at this point in our history is foolhardy and we need to move to green technologies and if we are to put the brakes on the climate crisis. We've talked about unprecedented conditions, Nathan talked about conditions in, in the North Atlantic and we've talked about the, uh, the regulatory system. And in spite of all this evidence, we have federal and provincial governments who are still hanging our economic future on oil and gas development. It's our opinion that all signs point to the need for a full independent public inquiry and going ahead with the in drilling in the absence of this exhaustive study is reckless in our opinion. And uh, we think that until such an inquiry is held and the report is in, that all uh, offshore oil and gas activities should be stopped. We use, uh, we've been talking about Georges Bank uh, uh, a bit. We think that the Georges Bank inquiry is an excellent model for a public inquiry. It was supported by both federal and provincial governments. It involved a lot of public <coughs> education hearings and uh, they toured around, they, they uh, held, held hearings in, in many, many communities. So we think that a model such as that would be effective in the case of offshore. Also, there was a public inquiry into onshore fracking, which we think provides a, a model. 
And Norway is another model that should be looked at in this process because all of Norway's ocean uh, is closed to oil and gas exploration until it can be proven and is approved by their parliament that the oil and gas exploration does not threaten their fishery. So there are countries who uh, have models that we can draw on. Um, this is just kind of a, a quick summary of why we think uh, municipalities should take a stand on this. It sounds like folks here are pretty uh, well informed about all of these. Uh, Obviously, municipalities played a key role in the other uh, two inquiries I, I referenced. Uh, you people are the most immediate access uh, uh, to, to we as citizens uh, in terms of the whole uh, democratic process. Uh, this issue fundamentally affects our economic and environmental health of our coastal communities. I spoke briefly before about the role that towns and cities in the U.S. have, have played uh, to, to have uh, a moratorium on offshore drilling and seismic testing. Concerned citizens, Nathan talked about uh, the efforts that COAC and other groups have made to, to have some input and to influence the approval process, and that's been, um, been ignored. So we feel that, uh, that, ask, that municipalities can help and play a big role in terms of, of getting such an inquiry established. Oh, I'm back at you. I don't know what happened there. Anyway, I'll just sum up quickly. So we are here today, as we've said before, to ask your council to pass a motion which we have circulated and I think is, is in your package. We've circulated a draft of a motion that, that we would uh, like to see passed. And um, we already have eight municipalities on side. The municipality of Clare, the town of Shelburne, the municipality of Shelburne, the municipality of Barrington, Municipality of the District of, Uni of Lunenburg, Municipality of Chester, uh, Digby, uh, Municipality of Digby, and the Town of Mahone Bay, and there are several others uh, uh, pending. So we thank you very much. We're sorry we went over time, but we can be a bit long-winded, both of us. Nathan and I are probably not a good pair. So. <laughs> so thank you very much, and, and if you wish, we would be happy to entertain more questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for the presentation, and it's something that we'll discuss as a council for sure. Thank you. I just, thank you. Yes. Just a question. I, question. Yes. I realize that um, you're, you're on a schedule and trying to respect your schedule, council. Uh, just a question. So why why public inquiry? So why was that your your choice around addressing the issues that you've raised? There's a variety of ways that you might address that. So why would your organization have selected uh, public inquiry as as the as the tool at which to go at this? Right. Would you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you if you would if you would please because then we can capture that in the. Yeah. Thank you. We chose to uh, ask for a public inquiry because we had been, uh, Nathan pointed out that the work that COAC was doing around the Clean Ocean uh, Action Committee and the regulatory body. We and uh, other groups like in, uh, Ecology Action Center, Sierra Club, and many, many others, we've been writing briefs, we've been making presentations, we've been trying to meet with politicians, we've been trying to uh, influence this, the decisions around offshore drilling in, in many other ways, which used to seem like conventional ways to do it. Uh, so we have determined that there's a need for the public to be educated and there's a need to look at all of the research and that a public inquiry is at this stage the most uh, feasible, most reasonable way to proceed, drawing on, on other examples. So I don't know, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. thank you. Okay. Any other questions? 
while she's there. We typically discuss uh, presentation matters at, at the preceding meeting, correct? Is that how we do it? It, it, it can be either yeah. later in the agenda, you can choose to do it later in the agenda, exactly. or you could do it in another meeting. It's be at the choice of council. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank, you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. You. We'll, we'll continue. Mr. Warden, uh, yes. would, um, would they be notified or Mr. CAO? If we do pass it, would they be notified? Yes. 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 We'd be notified either way. Either yeah. way. Yeah. Now, did you say you had a motion? I, I, I looked at the presentation. Oh, we have it there. Okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yes. Man, I've heard both sides on that. I'm so confused. <laughs> okay. We're going to keep going. The uh, adoption of yeah. Sorry, did you... Did you want to can ask? we can we can we do that while they're here or do is oh, that what you mean? Well what I'm saying is typically we do so so just just a suggestion to you, Mr. Warden, is that if you want to put it on the agenda for a later discussion, we've already approved the agenda. So yes. it can still be done, but it would, it would have to be the Exactly at the, at the will of the, the Well, court. that that's up to yeah, that's up to to, to I'm counsel. fine with discussing that today. Okay. Same here. I'm fine. Me too. I'm ready to, yeah. So yeah. to make the motion or second it, which one <laughs> which one so we can do that. We can do that at this point, if you want, or right we can now. wait till we have decisions here and, and add it to, to, well, to that. But they're here. Oh, you're still, they well, here. Well, you're, you're, still, you're still on topic. Yes. Right now. So then, then like why, don't we, why don't we? Why don't we go? Like why don't we go with that? Yeah. No, we're going to discuss it now, if you want to stay. And listen to what's going on. To how we make out. How you make out. Well, it's just... F yes, go ahead. Uh, for me, it was... I mean, we've had similar presentations, and I think if the municipality of Argyle can't support uh, seafood in the ocean, I mean, what are we really about? So I go ahead and make the suggested motion uh, presented today by Ms. American Blaze. I'll second that. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Question. Question called. All in favor? Aye. 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 Contraminded? Carried. So there will be a letter of support going yes, sir, from sure. the municipality. Yeah. 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 Very glad to hear that. Great. Thanks, okay. Well, yeah. good. Can I have John Davis' contacts? We'll send the letter to him and then he'll yeah. circulate. Yep. Perfect. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Now we can continue with the agenda. Adoption of uh, minutes, regular council minutes of May 15th. So moved. Moved. Seconder? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contraminded? Carried. Item number seven. These are just, we don't have to, to approve these. These are, they're not, there are some minutes. These, the acknowledgement the of the acknowledgement, minutes. that's all. Yeah, uh, it's not official minutes of council. No, it's not. These are the progress reports that have been given to staff uh, and, and for the new they're building. distributed to uh, okay. all of council for your information. Exactly. Uh, you, can, you can just acknowledge you can, receipt of that. It doesn't even have to be by motion. No. It can just be that you're acknowledging, you're not actually approving. Okay, but we, but, for, but we could have we could have a motion that we accept or, or, accept or acknowledge. Accept or acknowledge. Yep. I make a motion that we acknowledge these Minutes from uh, Wild Salt Aquaculture. Second. Architect. And my focus on Okay, it's moved and seconded. Any discussion on any of these? You've all had a chance to see them. Yeah. And if not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Contraminded? Carried. Business from our minutes, not from these minutes, but from our minutes, uh, we have a bylaw, Tuscan bylaw number 30, Tuscan wastewater bylaw amendment, and this is the second reading, and with the second reading we can accept, is that correct, or do we have to have another reading? Uh, this was advertised. This is yes. the second reading. So we can. Uh, this will be a motion to accept, accept. the changes. 
Uh, if my memory serves, we do have to advertise the, the fact that it's been changed. Okay. Um, uh, you know, in the unlikely event that a change of this nature would be appealed, uh, there is typically an appeal period for, for bylaw uh, changes. Uh, this is just a, a small wording change to a bylaw, so that's exactly. unlikely. But exactly. we do follow the process. Okay. So it would be a motion, motion. to approve. Motion to approve, to, to approve the, uh, the bylaw amendment. So, second. <laughs> Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Contraminded. Carried. Councillor's report. We can start on that end if you have Councillor Dr. Mong. Councillor uh, yep. Albright. I do. I'll go fast. So, two doctor recruitment meetings since the last time we've <laughs> met. Um, the big push right now and on the agenda for tonight is um, the approval of a budget for the navigator position. So they're trying to hire a navigator to be able to not only recruit new doctors, but to work on retention. That's a big piece that seems to be missing. Um, the recruiter that they have for the <coughs> province is just that, a recruiter, but they can't necessarily, they, they don't have the time to work on the retention piece. So that's one of the focuses that we'll be looking at as well. Um, they're, the committee is made up not only of council members, but it is made up also of, uh, we have a doctor on the committee, we have the Chamber of Commerce represented, we have the community development officers, we have CAOs, we have also at the last meeting yesterday, there was a, the spouse partner of a resident who came and told us, she's, they're from Ontario, and they said, this is what we would like to see happen in order to stay here. So. The committee is, is very diverse in the people that are there, and the ideas that are coming out are actually really, really impressive. So, like I said, there is an ask later on in the agenda, and they're looking to hire this person sooner rather than later. So we'll be looking at that. Um, attended the Nikhil AGM. They are looking for new members for the, uh, for the board. Or did they already fill that? You looked at me like... For, for Nikhil? the uh, Nikhil? They've yes. been, they've been, they've uh, been filled? Well, uh, no, uh, we're, we're, we're going to meet and it's going to get filled at that okay. next meeting. It hasn't been filled, but we've had The call one, went out. Okay. We, and we've had one response. Okay, perfect. Um, also, recreation meeting. We had our AGM for recreation. And the, the recreation department does a really good job of pushing their activities on Facebook. They have a Facebook page. And there's so many things happening this summer, and if you're not sure what's going on uh, summer program-wise, check their Facebook page, and they will they are listing the activities that they are doing. A couple of new things, there's a participa participation challenge going on right now. There's an app that you can download, um, and your minutes of activity are recorded. There is also a pilot program that we approved for teens that the, the age is, I think it's 11 to 14, so that's the chunk of, of um, the demographic that wasn't quite going to day camp anymore, so they're piloting a program for them for this summer. So we're going to see how that will work out. They've hired all their summer staff. Um, they get a lot of grants. 16 students are employed uh, this summer for through our recreation department, through maintenance, those types of positions. And a lot of that is funded by grants. So we, we do employ a lot of students in the summer. Baseball, soccer have started. Um, and then yesterday, we had our Mariner Center strategic vision, vision and planning meeting. So all three councils were represented there as well. And I felt like it was a really good conversation. We talked about what we're, the, the direction we're looking to go into. And I think that's everything. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, we had the, uh, I attended the waste park. So was the warden. He was, he was there also. Uh, what we're looking at is, uh, the waste park and new C and D site. Uh, we also were looking at uh, probably in the, in the fall purchasing a new excavator for about one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. We're spending now close to fifteen thousand dollars a year to keep that old excavator going. And the asbestos site was approved. It was approved, and uh, we're ready to dig a hole in anybody has asbestos. We can bring it in. Like Nicole, also we're all bright. Uh, went to the mission and vision at the Mariner Center last. Uh, last night it was it was really good, really that that uh, n not the navigator but the uh, 
facility. Match over the facility area really kept your attention, I found. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, sometimes you think some of that stuff could, could be boring. Many great ideas. Mm -hmm. We did a little dot, dot democracy where you dot with dots. What was some of the things we, everybody liked better? And the, certainly field house and the aquatic center was a couple of the things. Also uh, uh, selling beer and popcorn, like Clifford Wood would say. Hearing popcorn in the stands, that was a, a lot of dots on that one too. Try to raise more money. Really? Yeah, they figured out, uh, well, Councillor Hood did that quickly. You could raise close to $60,000 in a season. 59 games, 59 games total would, could be 50, uh, 26 home games could bring $59,000 profit. So you know what? So that's something that a lot of people were in favor of. I, I, I think the figures that he used were if the, if the place was filled and everybody would drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Each, to each two beers. Each yeah, two each beers. two beers. A thousand right. people, two beers apiece, and two that's bucks right. that, That's the figures he used. That's the figure he used. Oh. Yeah. So we can count it to about 30. <laughs> and have a driver to drive you home. That's it. Might be more business for lawyers. You can't, they've all drank. <laughs> <laughs> they've all had two beer. <laughs> Might be John from Calvary when it's a bus. All people. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I want yeah. Councilor Blanc. Uh, just very quickly, the Liaison Oversight Committee of the REN is looking, uh, or across his T's and dotting his I's out of the last few members for uh, a board appointment for the upcoming AGM. Um, that's, that's about it. Mm -hmm. I attended several meetings on the Mariners expans Expansion Committee uh, moving along, getting some concept drawings and different ideas. So nothing's nailed down at this point for sure. But I mean, now it's all seeing what some of this will cost and whether we're going to actually receive federal and provincial funding and how much. So there's so much to be determined yet. But anyhow, it's it feels like it is moving forward, and you'll you'll enjoy the committee very much starting tomorrow morning. And uh, I also attend, I also attended the, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities and the resolutions for the resolution session. We've narrowed it down to very few resolutions that they send on to the federal government. I forget the exact number. It was seven or eight or in that range. It wasn't it wasn't a lot of priority resolutions. And two of them were very important to us. One was passed that was a uh, funding for small airports with or without commercial uh, airline service, and uh, FCM hopefully will push hard for something, and that's something that affects us closely. And the other one was uh, rural internet. Uh, that was pushed big time at this conference, and okay. because, I mean, we're an example of it, but there's places that are far off worse than we are across the country, so uh, it was encouraging to see those Two resolutions passed, one in the high 80s and one in the 90 percent. So, uh, another, other than that, there was a lot of stuff that doesn't pertain to rural municipalities, but still, you go and you pick up still some good. stuff. Uh, still good. Still good. Thank you. That's about it. I attended a Mariners board meeting, I am Mariners Center board meeting, and also the vision and mission uh, for the uh, Mariners Center, and also attended the FCM which was very good, very informative. Yes. Okay. I, um, I attended the D-Day celebrations today in Wedgeport. A very, very good uh, celebration. It was the 75th, yeah, 75th uh, anniversary of D-Day, Normandy. There were a lot of veterans. There, was, there were some that could barely <laughs> walk in, but they, but they made it there. Uh, we had the we had the nine remaining sur 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 well, survivors. So they're still still around, I guess. They're survivors that from from that legion that were there. Uh, two of them who had fought the Normandy uh, battle. Uh, one of them is ninety nine. Well, and he was well, he was probably as spry as any of the others that were there. Yeah. <laughs> and I know I know one who's ninety seven, my uncle was there, he's ninety seven. He didn't go to Normandy but he did fight in war. But it was a very, very good uh, uh, celebration and, and uh, 
to see all these veterans there, and not just veterans from the war, but veterans from all the, that didn't that didn't go to to, to to any conflict, but served Canada. There, there was a lot of people there. I also went to some of the meetings uh, that that were already mentioned, which I won't mention again. Events Nova Scotia. They had a session to try and. It, it's more of, of trying to get the municipalities. We, we, we had people from Digby all, all around to Shelburne and, and try to plan events that, that don't coincide with someone else's event. Like, like that was a big, a big thing that they talked about because what happens sometimes is, is you have a big event coming and somebody else has one in another municipality and Someone loses, you know, you're not going to be able to go to both. So they formed a committee from, from the people that were there, and they were going to report back to, to the people that were at the uh, session. So other than that, like I said, Waste Park, uh, yep. the Mariner Center, we, we're having, we've had workshops with the, uh, with the firm that's uh, preparing the application. We're having a meeting tomorrow morning at 10. And the meeting is going to be a teleconference, but we're going to be able to, to see what they have. They're going to connect our computers. And that's going to be at 10 tomorrow. So again, other than that, basically everything else has been mentioned. So, Just a yes. quick note, a side note to the ceremonies you attended at the Legion today. Uh, to see them on ATV, uh, yes. Bellevue, uh, Reporters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was there. Suzette, yeah. Suzette Bellevue. She done, a, there. she done an excellent segment yeah. on that. Yeah. On, and, and interviewed uh, the two. The two uh, that, that, were that were at, 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 at in the end. One, one of them, I think it was, uh, um, is it Mackenzie? No. Spinney. Spinney? Yeah, Wesley Spinney. Wesley. 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 He said, uh, if I had to go today, I'd go back. Yeah, if I could. <laughs> yeah. Probably he wouldn't be called. <laughs> but anyway, it, it was a good celebration. It was it was very very uh, moving and enjoyable to see everybody there. Staff report. We'll turn that over to our CAO. Okay, thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, so, Municipal Admin Building, I'll just take a, a moment to update everyone. Uh, so, the architects are working very closely with ONSA, which is the electrical mechanical uh, consulting firm. Uh, you would have met Scott, one of the gentlemen uh, that came to council to talk about the, the process. Uh, it, it's hard to summarize the progress. I, I'll say that. The, the building design is far more economical uh, than the first design. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a very different uh, uh, design, obviously, and uh, a lot simpler, a lot simpler to construct. The materials are more readily available. Um, so that is something that uh, will significantly reduce the price. Uh, we did have a meeting that uh, with the uh, draft exterior sketch and the draft interior sketch and had the opportunity to talk to ANSA and Hanscom, which is their cost estimator, to say that they were reasonably confident that the square footage that they're applying, the cost of square footage that they're applying, um, should meet our budget. So obviously, this is at a high level. This is not a detailed design. This is sketch. This is class, like higher class estimate. So uh, we are much more confident that this process is going to produce a result that fits our budget. Uh, we uh, had a, we we moved very quickly on changes on the interior uh, because a lot of the setup is very similar to the old. It's just smaller. There's less hallways. It's a little bit more crowded in the sense that we had a bit more space before. Um, so in order to save money, we eliminated some duplicate hallways and things like that that, that added up, made a difference. Uh, however, we did make the offices larger because they were unusually small. So, so those are now larger uh, offices. The one feature that I'm really excited about personally is the uh, is the fact that we will um, 
so first of all, the roof line is going to be a lot simpler. Yes. But on the west side of the building, the sun will be able to enter via windows. And the, there will be two boardrooms inside this building, both of which will have an open ceiling with uh, natural light coming in. So oftentimes what you find is, is you go into a boardroom and it's, it's very congested, it's very sm it's not just small, but you've got like a 10 foot ceiling or you've got, yeah. so this is really, it's a small thing, but it really, it, it, it dresses up those rooms in a way that, that uh, I think I'm really excited about. People will be excited to use that, that space. Uh, similarly with council's chamber, the council chambers is not large, it's 32 by 32. For a long time I felt that that was not large enough until I walked into HRM and I walked into their council chamber. Their council chamber is only slightly larger than this room. And I'll bet you it's a 32 by 32. And I think there's a little bit more people in HRM than in the municipality. Yeah. So, so with the technology and all those things, I think that is, is something that, uh, that you know, kind of gives you that comfort level that we are rightly sized for that. Uh, the roofs, so is it the same pitch or is that going to change? The pitch is different. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's way more, uh, oh yeah, it's, it's okay. not, not like it's that. way more like this. And okay. so, yeah. and so on, on, the, uh, on the side facing the east, it's just a, a normal roof. It's just pitched like this, no, no sun, uh, no um, skylights or anything of that nature. The, the natural light will come from the windows on the east. On the, on the east. No, no, sorry. On the, on the windows. The, the natural light on the east side will come from the, the windows on the bottom level, not right. from the roof. So the roof line will go up like this, and then there'll be a, a, a feature where the, the, um, the windows will be facing the west. Yes. And then there'll be a, a, a drop and then a, and then a traditional roof line gotcha. coming down. So it's a far more simpler design. Yeah, simpler. Yeah. And uh, they will extend the roof beyond the... Uh, yeah, that's exactly it. So, so they'll, they'll extend the roof line uh, beyond the, the opening for safety reasons and things like that. And it allows them to dress up the front a little bit. So um, they've made some very good changes. Uh, you know, obviously, I was very... Uh, I was personally very fond of the first design, but... Uh, you have to let go yeah. because you can't. If you can't afford it, you can't afford it. You got to try something else. So, yeah. so I, I, I just I did spend quite a bit of time on the admin building uh, portion of our of the report. Um, we are moving forward with some of your priorities, which you will be approving officially tonight. Uh, the Mariner Center expansion report is included, uh, at least my version of that. International Airport Corporation. We are meeting on Monday, the that be the tenth, uh, something like that. And uh, Western Wren uh, just attended an audit committee meeting. The Sea Cucumber Appeal, uh, we did receive uh, the appellant's final report has been submitted to the UARB. So now our lawyers will be responding mm -hmm. to that uh, and they report. Have a week, right? Uh, I believe it look. I think so. I got the impression today that it might be quicker than that. Yeah, I, I think. I think uh, from what I understand is. Uh, they were asked if they could do it within a week, and they said yes, but they could do it quicker, like yeah. as soon as they're... Yes. They're actively working on it now. Exactly. So it, it is likely that they'll be completed and submitted before the weeks, before seven days go by. Exactly. And uh, the significance of that is as soon as that information is submitted to the OERB, the clock starts on the 60 days. Oh. So, uh, it was said that... that it could be up to 60 days, but it could be less. Yes. On the decision. They have to make a decision within, within 60, 60 days. days. It could be days. earlier. Yeah. So just a couple of things, just uh, human resources, uh, just a quick note on uh, some absences in our public works department, wow. uh, combined with heavy rains, and we've had rains here. We're now, we're, you know, obviously there's emergency measures that are uh, starting to uh, get engaged around mm -hmm. flooding. We, we have... Um, we have confirmed quite a bit of domestic, uh, like home floodings, basements that are being flooded. The fire departments have been doing their very best to assist residents with pumping out their basements. Um, and so uh, if you hear that in your community, understand that uh, the fire departments are, are the first responder in that area for the most part. Obviously, there's 
uh, you know, friendly neighbors that are helping uh, as well. We have access, we don't have access to a lot of, of sump pumps here in the municipality. And uh, typically when you, we have high rain events like this, we have to manage our own wastewater facilities that typically get uh, too much infiltration of water which needs to be managed by our wastewater mm -hmm. uh, people. So um, I'll stop there because uh, there's a lot more information obviously as you know. Um, we'll be entering audit season and uh, the tax bills will be released very soon so that will increase the activity here. And uh, are there any questions with any uh, aspect of the reports? Um, questions, I'll do my best anybody? I, I just have a comment on the affordable housing uh, um, compass, which is the co-op. I had said that they would be coming back to, to do presentations. It's scheduled for June 17th, but they are not going to be going to each individual council like they did the last time. It will be in Shelburne, town of Shelburne this time, and it's on June 17th. So anybody who's interested, it's at 10 in the morning, I think. So uh, they're going to have some uh, uh, sketches and, and you know plans of drawings of uh, some of the ones that are already uh, uh, in the in process. So just want to pass that on. Well, if there's no questions. Strategic priority topics that were known for decision. Council priorities. There's an attachment and all our five priorities are listed. Airport downsizing, Mariner Center expansion, alternative and affordable housing, municipal administration building, and the Oakbrook Fire Department construction. So we need a motion to approve these. So moved. Moved. Second. Seconded. Questions or comments? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Contraminded. Carried. Uh, next one is tax exemption request. That's for bylaw 28 for nonprofit organization. And this is the Windjammer Memorial Park Committee. And there's uh, two or three attachments there. This is the park that where, where the, uh, the children uh, lost lives in, in the fire in uh, Pucknickle Head. And there's a committee that wants to build a park there. Now, apparently, they've already acquired the property. Is that correct? Do you know? Yeah, they have. So there's a proposed motion there. So moved. Second it. The motion is to approve the tax exemption status for Windjammer Memorial Park Committee, which will also include a tax adjustment in the amount of $130.80 in order to write off the 2019-20 tax assessment bill. Any any questions? Any comments? Just just for clarification. Yes. So. Uh, what the proposed motion will do, just so that everybody's clear, is it will add this, um, well, you've got, you've got an option, I'll say that, okay? So, so we want to maybe clarify this uh, now. One is that you could do this, you could consider this every year, yeah. right? So there's only one other property that you do that with, and it's the Nikhil home, Nikhil. Right. Uh, because it's a partial exemption, and because of the amount, council wanted to revisit it every year. Mm -hmm. In all other instances, we don't do that. No. We actually put it inside the policy as an appendix. And so what you're actually doing is, not only are you, if, if this is your intention, I should say, not only are you writing it off for this year, you're writing it off for every year. Right. And so every year you review the, 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 the list, and that list gets brought to you, and you approve the list. So there won't be an individual motion on this no. again. Right? It, will be, it will be on that policy list. If ever you want to make the change, you can. But, but that's the intention of the motion, yeah. that it would be added to the policy, policy. appendix, so exactly. it, would be an, it would not be every year coming back. Okay. So if that's, the, if that's the intent of, of council, then this motion, we will act on that motion. And I would like to see that intent, but in the future, if the society decides to disperse and do away with the park for whatever reason, years okay. down the road, it goes back on the commercial or residential if it got sold. Back to the, For back sure. to the. It yeah. has to be owned by that, by yeah. that, 
that individual society or society another society or another society yes. that would probably have to 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 request anyway. Well, right. Yeah. So if no. it's another nonprofit organization non -profit. that purchases it, then they have you, to request. You can have the option to oh. deny their request. Right. Exactly. For for you know tax exemption. It doesn't. It doesn't follow the sale of this. This motion doesn't follow the sale of the property. It does not. No. It follows the owner. Owner only. Which is of that, that particular exactly. society. Exactly. Yes. That's okay. correct. So you're all clear. All in favor? Aye. 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 Contraminded. Carried. Uh, RFD for the Public Library Branch. And there's two attachments. As maybe you are or not aware, but that, that uh, library building is getting to its the end of use, right? I mean, we need to do something. So we, we're not, we don't have a place or we don't have a, a specific uh, uh, location, but this is just, uh, the, the, the uh, motion would be just to be able to have uh, an, RF, an RFP with different uh, organizations in the public area if they had the, the, the room to, to accommodate the library. Yes. Did you want some yes, more detail on the meeting? Yes, for yeah. sure. So um, this request was initiated by the Western Counties Regional Library. So um, they are having some difficulties with recruitment. They're having mm -hmm. difficulties with the facility. The facility itself is not owned by the municipality of Argot. We're in a 99-year lease. And so it is, it is owned by um, a nonprofit organization that sought to preserve, protect that property so um, so the property itself is has become you know fairly unsuitable for library use and the um, the actual library use itself is declining fairly rapidly yeah. and so uh, of course many might jump to the conclusion that well you know libraries aren't needed as much as they were before because of the technology and um, however uh, uh, what Western County's Regional Library will tell us is that in every other community the the uh, use is increasing mm -hmm. and some of the smallest uh, communities uh, that are perhaps a little isolated from uh, some urban centers are being used far more yeah. than the facility in Pubnico and there'd be no reason why that would be true because the population in the Pubnico area is quite large so so there is an issue and so um, of course, we, as as uh, we're trying to we're trying to identify and solve and solve, uh, or at least I, examine how we can solve uh, this issue. So, the recommendation that we're presenting is basically it gives us permission to work on your behalf yeah. to identify nonprofit entities within the Pubnico area that may be able to share a space. Now, sharing a space probably means partial new construction as well so or whatever that like I don't think there's suitable space that's that a library can just parachute in and you could just do a library right it would be additional space the the uh, the idea is that that kind of project is very attractive for funders because you're you're addressing multiple partners and you're you know uh, uh, Western County's regional library has access to a co and other funding for new libraries, and so typically we are a partner, a funding partner, but uh, in it, but we don't necessarily have to own uh, the facility outright. So there are still a lot of questions to be answered, but we saw we, we saw opportunity that we wanted to um, pursue. So um, the the work isn't going to happen overnight, but we didn't feel like we could have any conversation with anyone without council debating whether or not they want that to happen. So that's my long summary. Mm -hmm. I'd be willing to make that motion to council approve staff to identify the potential nonprofit entities within the public area that may be able to share a space with the Western County's Regional Library and that this uh, result be brought back to the council to determine the next, step, next steps. Seconded. On the, moved and seconded. On the question. question. Does that mean that we'll, we'll cease spending money on that building unless it's an emergency situation? 
Uh, it, it probably means that we'll be very conscious around major repairs. I mean, okay. I don't think we could ever avoid uh, the minor repair situations or, or issues of safety. Um, well, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. We're not going to do upgrades if we don't have to. I, I think that it would, it really tells staff that we need to identify what our options are before we invest any more money in that facility. For sure. Question on the motion. Just before. Okay. No. no, no point, so, uh, I, I, if I remember correctly, uh, I don't know if staff or somebody had met with the trustees. No, I never got uh, done. <laughs> uh, I, th I believe that was uh, Councillor Bork that had uh, engaged to do that, and I don't know that that happened okay. as of yet. I don't re recall if there was a staff, also a staff present or, or supposed to be present. It's possible. I don't have that recollection. I don't think it ever got done. They couldn't get everybody organized. I mean, there's mm -hmm. people in their 90s and yeah. some not healthy. And I'm quite sure it didn't happen. So I guess the trustees, uh, do they know about this? or? I guess just in case we haven't, uh, you know, great question. It would be, question. it would be the the answer to that question probably lies with Councillor Bork. Okay. Uh, I believe they were notified that that we wanted to talk about the building. Okay. They were not deciding to continue or not continue with the building, but you know you're quite right to mention the fact that they need to be mm -hmm. engaged in that yeah. process. So, Councillor uh, uh, what my my uh, my question is uh, if it came on a if it came that we had to when somewhere we built something on oh, obviously you get money from a co or whoever would that building then if we somehow something happened that it didn't work out in twenty years would that building what we've built there be still ours or would it be shared or or that has to be discussed first? It's, it's, I don't know. Okay. The answer is that that will be, Honest, yeah. the devil is in the details. Yes, of course. Um, yeah. It's possible that it, it, it could be an independent add-on on, on a property that we don't own. Oh, yes. That, that yeah. there's some yeah. sort of long-term lease. Like, there's a variety of yeah. possibilities. Okay. In many instances, it's the municipality that ends up owning the asset. But that's not, it's not exclusive. It's not exclusively the case. Okay, yeah. right, gotcha. Thank you. And, and just one other thing that, like we mentioned, like as some people may want to, you know, well, why Pubnico? Uh, why not somewhere else? Or you know, or you're building a new building in Tuscan, maybe you could add it on to that. It, it, yeah. The answer is we can't do that because the Western Counties Regional Library has a mandate for that location. Oh, if it's too close to their center, yeah. they won't. They, it won't be approved. So they. They're not, nobody is looking to move it out of the Pubnico area. Very it good can't point. be, it, it actually can't happen because their funding won't support it. No, good. because they have to, it has to be a certain distance from the uh, Yarmouth one and a certain distance from the Barrington one I as well. And the only thing, if I may, I, my seconder will agree with it, uh, the Pubnico, could I mention it? Could I say the Pubnicos? Yes, because some people it's are the quite Pubnicos. the Pubnicos. It's not just West Pubnico. Oh, it's not. Yes. Okay, it's right. the Pubnicos. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and and just because yeah. there is and there is francophone funding for the uh, for the bilingual position. The position is intended to be bilingual. Yes. Uh, but that doesn't mean it has to be in a bilingual community. That's right. As de as defined by whomever lives in that community, yes. it can be in 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 what is understood to be a primarily. Anglophone community, as long as it's providing service to a francophone right. community Very in good. that area. Yes. So the pubnicos is the appropriate term. Yes. Well said. Okay. Question. Question call for. All in favor? Aye. 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 Contraminded. Carried. An RFD no. airport agreement, second extension. Community navigator. D. D. Community navigator, sorry. I missed one, community navigator. And this is what Councillor Albright just brought up. Yeah, that was interesting. There is a change. Yeah, I can speak to it. Yeah. There is a change. So there is a change. They've proposed a budget to hire the navigator position. And if you look, I think it's on page eight of the proposal, it kind of breaks down uh, where the funding will come from. So, yes. so far, the, the, the province has been in support of this initiative. They've told the committee members that have approached them that they're looking to help us out with this. So there's a chunk there from government, but the part that we're looking at tonight to pass is the 20,000. So each municipal unit is going to be asked to um, 
give twenty thousand dollars towards this initiative. One year. Two for, year. Three years, for, three year. for three years. For three years. Twenty thousand per year. Per year for three years. Yeah. Thank you. So we need a motion. I'll make that motion. Moved. Seconded. seconded. Moved and seconded. And the question. And yes. Can we cover this in the budget we've uh, I think yeah. it allotted yeah. for? We've allotted. Oh, yeah. I think we allotted. Sorry, put aside. Yeah. So At the time the budget was prepared, I thought it might be there was a chance it might have been higher. Yes. Oh, I get you. But we've managed. Yeah. Uh, because there was this. Because we conference. had. Oops. Yeah. Because yes. we had that oh, discussion. Yeah. Was that yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. I'm good with it. And uh, I have a question. So yes. The, uh, the other uh, town for the Spagar and the Spagar, uh, we know they have approved the twenty thousand each. Or? Not yet. They are meeting soon. Okay. Within the next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would it be twenty thousand contingent so, so on yeah. on the others uh, contributing or? Right. Well, I, I think that if you, you had significant pushback from the other communities, that uh, it probably wouldn't go forward. Uh, I don't know that your motion has to be conditional, okay. for instance, no. uh, but, but you can choose to do that as a council. Mm -hmm. I think in the past that's you know normally what we do just to make sure usually mm -hmm. usually yeah, that's what we are behind. So. Yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. But I, I I feel personally that if you know if it went ahead, if there were other and, and they could find money whatever somewhere else, that I don't think I would want our municipality to to depend that it's if, if another unit says no that no. We're not going to go either. I, I think it's important, and, and as long as a project goes, I feel that that uh, I would feel comfortable in, in contributing our share of the money, regardless of what the others do. That's if it goes. I mean, if, if the others, if, if for some reason some of the units said no, maybe they wouldn't be able to go anyway because maybe they wouldn't have the money, right? But if they could find the money elsewhere, I think. My my feeling is that that our contribution should should be should go, should be uh, set that we are going to contribute. Yes. Um, that the question on whether you want to do conditional or not is a political question. Yes. I can I can offer you uh, an administrative background on the proposed budget. The the proposed budget does not have to go the way that it's showing. Right? Inside that budget are things that are you may choose not to do or you may choose to do less of if you had less partners. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the basically what this budget says is the province of Nova Scotia is gonna pay for the administration, the base salary, uh, sorry, it was base salary and, uh, mid, and a couple other things. Mm -hmm. So they would pay for the position and, and the other funders would pay for all the other things that the position needs. Right. So if you, if, you, if you had to pull the gas off like if you had to slow down and take the take the foot off the gas on some of that stuff because you had one less partner, you could still do that and hire the navigator as long as the others are committed oh, okay. for a three year deal. Okay. Right. So so that's not a political conversation. I'm just saying that from the perspective of the of the budget, you could pull stuff out of there easily mm -hmm. uh, and not do as much of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if that's the request, I mean, if that if that's the if well, that's the uh, feeling up. You know, you want to add that. I was to looking me. at it politically. And, yes. Uh, yes. You know, just to kind of put a little bit of leverage on the other units, and even though it would be conditional on the other ones, if one of them happened not to, we could always revisit and, you know, if we wanted to. Yeah. That would be council's choice. Okay. And that would have to be added to the to the motion if we're going to change that. Because I think in the past, uh, you know, we, we, we've, we've been done leveraged that. before we've done ourselves, that. right? People saying, well, you know, conditional on yeah. mm -hmm. you guys, you know, being part of the, you know, so. Mm -hmm. That's all, that's the angle that I was mm -hmm. taking. So. I would agree with Councilor Doctor more that uh, something like this, uh, hey, at least we have that option. And that's why I, we have that option if something isn't happening. In, so I certainly agree with that, to add that. I see it a little differently. They're asking this $222,000 budget, 80 of it, 80,000 of it is municipal contribution. If we give 20, another council, council gives 20, that's 40 of that 80,000. We move on with the 40,000 and, and do what we can to, because I believe in this position and what it can do for us. And, and if some municipality's not on side and don't believe that, well, that's, 
that's totally up to that's them. But I, but I don't yeah. agree with them not funding it. It's just I don't think we should make a decision on whether they do or don't. I think I feel strongly enough for this position and, and that amount of funding that we have for that position that I, I don't need those conditions. Mm -hmm. But if they're there, I'm going to vote for them. But uh, exactly. I wanted to move forward, but I don't think it's necessary. Same here, either way, whatever goes. So the motion now does not include the conditions. That's correct. So we would have to uh, uh, amend that motion. No, oh, yeah, we don't have to amend. It hasn't been passed yet. That's right. No. Well, yes, you have, to make, you have a motion on the floor. In order to make a uh, change to the motion, you have to make vote an amendment first. Yes. Then, yes. Once That's the right. amendment is passed, then, then you, you vote on the motion amendment. as amended. And yes, right. two thirds. Uh, no. 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 Not in this instance. No. Okay. The, the the motion belongs to council right now. Right. So it's up to council to amend that motion or not. Okay. I forget even who made it. Now it's so, so, and you who made the you made I the motion. Motion. So, and seconded. So and we seconded. so 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 if there is an amendment to be on it, this motion, it has to be via another motion. Exactly. It doesn't it? it, it Oh, but it wasn't carried. So does that no, that nothing has still, been done. It's yeah. still okay. It would still, it's still the same process. So we would need a, another motion that would include that condition to the, and right. then we would vote on the yeah. amendment, and or we would vote on the amendment, and if it passes, then you vote on the motion. That is correct. Right. So can we have someone if if that's what? I'm comfortable with the current motion. Me Just too. putting that out there. I spoke on it. I'm comfortable with it. So I just hope to God it works. As far as getting us more healthcare professionals in the area. Yes, of course. So that, again, the, 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 so again, the kind of the way I'm looking at it. Okay, let's say and I'm just going to use the Spay and Burns for an example. If they say no, we're not going to give any money. We go ahead with this. We pay, and then they, we find doctors for Barrington. How are you going to feel about that? Fine. Really. I go to Barrington to my doctor, so some resentment, but we got a doctor, which is the end games. After but hearing, after being hearing a member on that committee so too, the the municipality of Barrington, from what I, the feeling that I get, everybody's on board. It's not going to be a problem. Right. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. But I, I hear what you're saying. I know exactly where you're coming from. Great right? point. I do too. Great point. That's why I'm not worried about it, and that's yeah. why I'm comfortable right. with the motion. But, so. And having said that, though, a lot of our residents right now in the West Public area that go to Barrington for a doctor. So as long as we can bring in another doctor or doctors, I'd be mm -hmm. very happy with that. Exactly. So is anybody prepared to make a motion for an amendment to add that? And if not, we have a motion on the floor. Question. Question call for the motion as it was presented. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contraminded. I guess I have to say nay since I argued. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want that you report? Want it. I, I, I want it recorded. Oh, I okay. Okay. I argued over it, so I might as well vote. You got to. Right. Got to exactly. Vote to integrity. I'd think less of you if you didn't. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've seconded motions that are always against just right, so it could be discussed. So that can be discussed, right. exactly. I, I've done that too. Entirely, yeah. It's entirely democratic. Yeah. It's absolutely. Yes. Doesn't mean because you seconded it, you approve it. Anyway, the next one is the agreement, uh, RFD for uh, second extension. Maybe you want to explain. Uh, just, yeah. just we, that it's we, I think we know what just it's Just that it's about. taken longer. <laughs> Um, it, longer. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, with the with the current workloads and of, exactly. of the CAOs moving in all, every little place, we actually did meet today, and we will be meeting uh, next sure. week. Uh, so we are uh, moving in, I think, a way that is consistent with what the Council of Argyle has intended. Okay. One of your priorities is to downsize the airport. Yes. This agreement is is being spelled out exactly in that way. Um, we will, and I think, you know, so, so we're trying to establish uh, who, who makes the decisions, uh, how the decisions are being made. So it's not just an extension of funding. It's no. actually an extension of funding with, with uh, milestones that, we sh that we're trying to achieve. Yes. So we're giving the board, not just, we're giving the board direction as to how to move 
our intentions. Mm -hmm. So, which hopefully will make a, for a better board. That's right. A more effective board. And, and the fact that we're, we're extending another 60 days, if an agreement can be reached before, oh, it can, you know. Yeah. We're, we're just saying we're giving everybody two, 60 more days to, to, to come up with an agreement. I move that an extension of another 60 days be granted to the CAO to negotiate a revised intermunicipal agreement for the Yarmouth International Airport Corporation. This extension is authorized under the same conditions as the original extension request and following a revised negotiation schedule as recommended by the three CAOs. Second. Man, man. that was a difficult one. <laughs> Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Contraminded, carried. Now, we go to correspondence. We've had, and okay, yep. We've had uh, documents for uh, uh, this, destruction of documents, affidavit for documents that will be destroyed. This is just right now. I thought we had passed the motion to we did. destroy. We did. This is just the this details. This is just the, the details because yeah. there are some here that have question marks, I see. Does that mean, you know, like phone message books, do we need to keep? Uh, uh, building building, fire, plumbing code books, how long to keep? There's just some some of them here that are questioned, and I didn't know if, but. I'll amend it, that's just my notes. You, you yeah. will, yeah. It, like I said, it's just, just for our information here, that's that, that some of these could, could change, but we did, we did approve the, for, the, to, for yeah. some of the documents to be destroyed, for sure, yes. that yeah. could be. We have uh, the municipal report, 30 pages, I've, I've gone through it. I've gone through the municipalities I was interested in and we've done, As well. we scored very well. We, we scored very, very well. Yeah. yeah, very pleased with how we scored. Southwest Nova Scotia to host the Congre Mondial La 2024. I'll add to that, uh, Niall Dowsett has already been uh, lobbying while we were in uh, Quebec City for entertainers for it. There you go. <laughs> Neil. Neil Dowsett? Oh, yeah. Neil, Neil, how do you say it? Neil? Neil. 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 Yeah. Neil. yeah. Neil. Okay. <laughs> That's good. It's true. No, yeah. It's very interesting. Well, we had a big... Nothing like being prepared. We had a big talk and talk and talk. And I said, I'm going to go talk to them guys. And he did. What he did? <laughs> they were some of the main entertainment for uh, the closing banquet. Yes. And they knew some people from Claire. Okay. Just the former councillor Russell. Right. Russell, help me here. What was his last name? Uh, come on. Russell, come on. Was it guitar player Devo, Russell? Devo, I think. Was it? It Devo. don't matter. Russell, Anyhow, Russell Devo. Russell Devo. Russell. 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 Uh -huh. <laughs> Anyhow, sorry. No, that's fine. It's that that event just just to just to drop it, drop a a, a, a plug or whatever, however you want to describe. it. That event is going to be bigger than anything mm -hmm. that's ever been hosted here ever. Yeah. Yeah. Even bigger than the last one, do you think? Well, well no, the, the one in 2004 was province-wide. Province-wide. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. this is... Uh, more condensed here. Yeah. Right. Depending on the interest between 65 and 100,000 people coming to Southwest Nova Scotia. That's right. Like, it's... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> True enough. It's, it's going to fill every hotel room, uh, yeah. including some in Halifax, and then some. Sure. And then some. And that, yeah. There'll be Abbe houses. All the Lovidius <laughs> Abbe vacation rentals. Name it. Yeah. It's, it's, yes. it's going to. It's going to. But it's it's great. You know. I mean, there's yeah. going to be some. Neil said expenses. he's going to live in his camper and open up his house, and he knows other people are going to do the same do the thing. Same oh, is that right? Well, that, that right? Didn't that happen last time? I think people were. There were some the billeting. There's a lot of families that yeah. come and stay with families. So yes. It's not just hotel, no. hotel, hotel. That's there's right. there's exactly. a lot of there's exactly. a lot of family connection as yes. well. Yeah. Yeah. I remember in West Family Hill, uh, they had bus service to go to. There's so many people, right? So they pick up people, and so I went on the bus with my son, and he was just probably four years old. 
and we get on the bus, and you know, I know everybody in West Bumpy and all of a sudden I look around and say, who are these people? <laughs> and we kept picking up people at people's houses that I didn't know, but it was relatives from yeah. Massachusetts and Ontario right. and wherever and who were them. staying with, you know, with their relatives. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. For sure. Yeah. For had sure. Choice, right? yeah. Uh, minimum planning requirements, municipal affairs. So do we have to go through that? Anybody? Our, our plan currently meets the minimum planning requirements for the, yes. that the province imposes, but our plan okay. is, is overdue for, for renewal. Yes. Uh, and uh, so we'll be, we'll be engaging planning services to finish Good. that piece. Right. Argonne Municipal Firefighter Association minutes. Okay, we move on to financial requests. Move that we approve all 26 financial requests. <laughs> <laughs> I second that. <laughs> the community grants. Does anybody see any problem with any of them? Can you do that? I think we have to go you through and do said, whatever you want. <laughs> you said think, you don't know for sure. Yeah. I think, I you know, I don't know for sure. Show, that's not a for sure. Well, that's not for sure. Does the actual but, councillor that has the community grant no. have to be here? No. 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 They all, do they all meet the policy? Yes. And they're all attached online too. They, I've attached them a little over a week ago, so they're all there. Yeah. I've read every one. My motion was a serious motion. Now he was a serious motion. We always a serious second. <laughs> and I think in the in the interest of, uh, I guess, letting the public know who's where, getting who's getting what. Well, well we can we can list them. <laughs> We, yeah, we can we can mention the ones we that can. are going to get funding. I don't think there's anything wrong. We've we, always said we could need individual motions, and we've, yeah. always we've, we've always said that. But I don't know that that's legally, officially the case. I mean, ultimately, no. what your your motion is is you're condensing the motion and you're approving all of these in one. Um, I, I I I think you can do that legally. Can we just list them afterwards so that people will know? Yes. And they're listed well. online too. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, obviously, each of these are going to get a letter saying they got funding. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and if and, and we can, I, I can, can go, I can go through them. Yeah. You know, Please. so so we're going to accept the motion now. There's one on there that wasn't on this list here that you yeah. added. That's why I said 26. There's 25 on there, and there's a 26. With Very this. good, you see. I love it. Wow. <laughs> You're right on that. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I can list the twenty, the twenty, the twenty, the twenty six. Um, one is uh, okay. Councillor Bork. Councillor Bork has uh, sound effects, a youth music in initiative, uh, Pumniko Light Monument Society, Eastside Community Centre. Those are all for five hundred. Pardon me, and they're all for five hundred, by yes. the way. Every single one. Yes. Councillor LeBlanc has one for Comité de 250e anniversaire. Councillor Dottermont, the Pubnico Point Trail Association, the West Pubnico Athletic Association. Councillor Digden, Pubnico Area Lions Club, La Société Historique de Pubnico West, Pubnico and Area Garden Club. Councillor Donaldson, Mount Pleasant Cemetery Company, Lower Argyle Harbor View Cemetery Committee, Nakeel Home for Special Care, and Glenwood Hall, Councillor Surrett, Twin Village Social Club, and Club Social des Îles, events and at the, at the Events and Planning Committee, Councillor Murphy, Festival Acadien de Wedgeboard, the Plymouth Fencing Committee, the Plymouth Cemetery, Comos Hill and Little Harbor Beach Committee, Committee of uh, San Gabriel Cemetery, Council Albright, the Patchwork Pals Quilting, Village Friends, Le Club Acadien, Les Amis de saint Anne. The Knights of Columbus, 89-88. Club des Audaciers de Quinnin and Quinnin District Volunteer Fire Department. And that's the 
grants that we had, the request that we have for these. So we have a motion to accept. I think it was moved mm -hmm. yeah. and seconded. Yeah. Any questions or discussions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Contraminded. Carried. That was easy. It's fine. It's fine when you have one or two, but yeah, I know when you have that many. Thirteen grand in our community. Mm. So we just about twenty-six times five hundred. So. Yes. Oh my God. Exactly. Right. That's right. When you come to think of it. Yeah. 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 And poor Councillor Albright is in the same position I was in last year, bro. It happens every time. <laughs> yeah. Is that right? It's on. I haven't had a. I haven't had a. I haven't had a request oh, yeah. yet. I thought I was going to have one to bring tonight because I got a call and I told I told this person to send me a letter and it didn't okay. it didn't happen but it, it'll probably be here for the next one. Okay, agenda topics for next meeting or notice of motion by councillors. Didn't we want a motion for the steering committee for Anderson? Oh, we missed one. Yeah, okay. and I had it wrote down too. <laughs> Sorry, I should. Okay. So, with, with the group of nine, right. what we have now, what we have now is uh, that the, it's a warden and deputy mm -hmm. that sit on that, and I guess, I don't know that it has to be, but, um, I would Councilor rather Johnson be, would, Councilor, yes. because it's mostly daytime meetings, and, and you're having very, a hard time, they're on very restricted in daytime meetings as of now. So, yeah. I mean, what about Councilor Dignan? Well, you do you get a percentage on that? Pardon me? You're on the mayor report already. And, and that, no, I believe when the group of nine was originally it was and, it was uh, meant up, to be the it was uh, the wardens and deputy and wardens. The deputy wardens, wardens. I, I read it back. Because, no problem with me, by the way. Because, because what happens here? The group of nine is is the uh, uh, is the committee for the uh, for the manor center application, but it's not all we. We meet as a group of nine on different issues as well, right? We didn't form oh. the group of nine just for this. We said the group of nine would be the committee for, for, for this when we went ahead. We've been meeting as a group of nine before we before we decided that, that, that we were going to apply for the Mariner Center. I don't. Am I, am I right in the audience? Yeah, we did a couple times. Yes, we did. To, me, to, to, to discuss other regional projects. I, I think well, that I, didn't those, that. I think I that never I, understood that it did. Neither did I. It was when it was brought up. Just for this, brought up for the Mariner. nine, and that for to put an application or to see about putting an application in for the possible expansion to the Mariner Center. Yeah. Same here. Well that was my understanding too. But the, uh, same here. The, 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 the group of nine met. Yes. Uh, on various uh, informally, yeah. not formally as a subcommittee of no. this council. Uh, as wardens and deputy uh, wardens and mayors and deputy mayors often do, they will have informal meetings to discuss issues of the day. I think the intention of the motion is specifically for the Mariner's yes, Center expansion. expansion. And the then motion. if there is okay. if there is another s official subcommittee of council that will be built of the nine, then I think you'd almost have to bring that back, back for a different mandate. I agree. Exactly. So, so the informal meetings of nine, if they meet and have a chat about you know, you know the status of the state of the union. That's not an official meeting of council. It does not require like it's just it's an informal it's an informal coffee basically. It's not no decisions are made. It's a conversation. Okay. But the decision to apply funding for funding is a decision and right. should be managed with a terms of reference and with official meeting minutes. Uh, which we are taking, we are taking and minutes. so the motion intent is for the expansion. Okay. Any other meetings that happen would be just informal conversation. Okay. Exactly. Because I knew we had met before. And as far as I'm concerned, when those meetings or get-togethers are happening, any of us are able to go to those get-togethers and speak freely. The, uh, if it's not a Mariner Center expansion meeting. I think there's actually there's actually more... Uh, I think there's, there's I, th I would suggest that there's more opportunity for councillors to attend the official meetings. And I think the position that was taken by the province was slightly different than mine. Um, I, my understanding was because you're councillor that you could sit in both the in-camera and regular meeting of the Mariner Centre expansion. Um, I think the province is saying, well, actually, because it's a subcommittee of council, the in-camera component would be for the nine. 
but everything else would be open. Um, that's their interpretation of it. Uh, uh, I, I would suggest that the, the that the, the you have every right as a councillor to attend the meetings of Mariner Centre expansion um, uh, in the in the open meeting uh, portion. Um, I think. If a councillor wanted to know about informal conversations between mayors and wardens, I think the best way to do that is just to have, is to have that conversation with the mayor or the ward, and uh, and see what's going on. Because those those don't typically there's there's not typically an official meeting with minutes and decisions uh, in those conversations. See, we used to have all three councils get together as councils. I mean, so many people around the table. And it got to the point where we felt that we couldn't accomplish much by having that many people around the table. And that's where I thought that we had come with the, uh, with the decision that, that it would be a group of nine that would meet. But maybe I'm wrong. I tell you, in, in, in the speaking on transparency, uh, to me, if no matter what the group, the so-called group of nine, whatever, any council should be able to go in, in the, because of transparency. I don't think that a group of nine should be meeting, although you're not making decision. No. Well, guess what? There's stuff that's being di discussed that sometimes comes to be decisions, or could be, technically so. Why not have but, everybody else in there? But the decisions but to would... To me, that's how I feel. I feel to be very transparent. But the decision no, would, I, never, would never be made at a group like that. It would all come back to counselor. each individual council, and there's your transparency. You can discuss things, but you can't make motions. You can't you can't make a decision on anything. The transparency is to bring it back to council for a decision. If I may speak for I've been part of this. Sure. Yes. The only thing I see that we've done in this so far these call them what you want, formal, informal, meet, exactly. whatever. All we're doing is trying to decide whether we're going to put an application in for funding to the federal oh, right government. Now. Yes. Yeah. That's basically all we've done or all we're doing. We don't know what it's going to look like. We don't know how much we're going to get. We just wanted to make sure all three municipalities are on the same page yeah. with applying for funding. That's nothing, no more, nothing, no less is taking place. There's no secrets going on. There's nothing going on. That's all we've done so far. Exactly. We've Talk to an to a um, help me out here. Your what? EPX, EXP EXP who is consultant who? like has given us some suggestions and ideas and they're and and it looks like we probably will go ahead with an application. They're going to prepare that application, which and is we'll see what we can get for funded and then the big decisions start being made. Yes, that's it. That's just, it's as simple as that. Yes, unless I've seen it differently than somebody else. Mm -hmm. Comments that, from the other two that have been attending. That that would be my. I, I would I would agree with that. I mean, but I think I think what what councillors are raising is the issue of okay, well, what constitutes a meeting, right? That's like, right. What, what is a meeting? You know, like that's you know, the point. A phone a phone call from from one from one mayor to another, uh, just having a conversation. I mean, I, I like at some point there's a practicality around all of this where you can't you know tell your council every time that you're going to have. Uh, a meeting. So I think the question is, what constitutes a meeting? And that's, I think that's a discussion that we should have with sure. the other two municipal units, exactly. because it's not just us; it's the other two. So yeah. when when the group of nine gets together informally, what should happen? Exactly. You know, and and I, yeah, and and I don't think it was necessarily to replace the the meetings of all council. I I think what happened with the meetings of all of the councilors. Is that it's it's it gets unruly and we never really have a strong agenda no. that keeps us focused on yeah. on that. That's right. So we've had some, I think we've had some very good conversations happen there. Yes. Uh, but we've also it's also been a little. Well, 27, 23 yeah. elected and it's, six or seven staff. It goes nowhere. It just it, goes it, in circles. Exactly. Yeah. It's I'll a tell lot you of what, people. I enjoy those meetings because everybody can voice their opinion. That's exactly. well, I, I know sometimes I know what you're saying. It could get on really, but a lot of times I, you know, you you, you could feel what the what they were, the others were saying, where they were going, and kind of I like that that discussion. Yeah. So anyhow, we so that's, that's how I felt. But. So Guy, are you going or not? We got to sort this out. Uh, I will. I will go. Any of the other? Oh yes, I'm, I'm on to it. But just to let you, no problem. Where's if anybody else wants so to, where it's an informal where? committee, you don't even need a motion. No. 
Right. We are we are yeah. just about at the end of these meetings because uh, the application is probably going to go in within the next week or so because we have to have it in right. before the end of June. Yeah. And right. I think the meeting tomorrow there's going to be some some uh, recommendations on you know. So but this will have to come back to council our next meeting, which is which is before the, the end of June, right? Right. Well, yeah, right. and we may have to if if we, we have to have we, to call one earlier than yeah. we would. Okay. Yeah. 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 Very I mean, the, the big right. sorry, and I realize we're supposed to be making a motion here or, mm -hmm. or a decision for Guy uh, to be on this uh, committee, but I think it's important that you that you collectively understand that that you know we're moving through a cycle where so can we do this? Can we do that? Can we do this? And, and there's an affordability piece that we need to have a discussion around. And so mm -hmm. that, that will come back to this council, yeah. right? Yes. So, you know, it's, it's difficult for us to, to know exactly what your portion is yeah. on an investment of this nature because we don't know, we don't know the, the, the size of the investment. Right. So it's, it's a moving target. Yeah. Yes. So for now, I think a motion to replace Richard with Guy would be appropriate. I think it would be appropriate. And, exactly. and, and then we can just... Hopefully, we'll resolve some of the other issues as yeah. we as we move along with them. And I think that motion is already on the floor. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if there was a mo I don't believe a motion was made. I think it was just. Uh, it was Nic Nicole oh, did, did you? I just did. Oh, you just, just did. did. <laughs> and I'll second that motion. Okay. All in favor. Aye. 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 Good. So, Guy, you're on the committee, and we have a meeting tomorrow morning. Here. At, no, we have it at the uh, municipality of Yarmouth. Yeah. At 10 o'clock. Yeah. That's the one in Hebron because I always go to the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> so, question period. Do you have any questions for us? It's way more fun back here, Mr. Gordon, than it is actually. <laughs> <laughs> no in camera sessions. Yay. Motion to adjourn. So, so. Thank uh, you. The only yes. thing I should have mentioned.